Hey guys, let's get more news about Miami Heat, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. The Heat should have big expectations for Jamie Jacquez Jr. in his second year. It's no secret that Jamie Jacquez Jr. turned plenty of heads during his rookie campaign, from his viral fourth-quarter turnaround fadeaway over LeBron James in a tightly contested January matchup, to the numerous times that Eric Spolster called upon him in late-game moments throughout the season. It is clear that the Miami Heat have found yet another gem in the draft. The deceptively explosive small forward flashed a veteran-like skill set as a rookie and earned an uncommon amount of trust from Spolstra. He averaged just more than eight minutes per game in the fourth quarter and earned first-team all-rookie honors. Despite a slight setback due to a mid-season groin injury, Jaquez finished the year at just under 12 points on 49% shooting, 3.8 rebounds, and 2.6 assists, while logging about 28 minutes per game. It's no secret that Jamie Jaquez Jr. turned plenty of heads during his rookie campaign, from his viral fourth-quarter turnaround fadeaway over LeBron James in a tightly contested January matchup, to the numerous times that Eric Spolster called upon him in late-game moments throughout the season. It is clear that the Miami Heat have found yet another gem in the draft. The deceptively explosive small forward flashed a veteran-like skill set as a rookie and earned an uncommon amount of trust from Spolstra. He averaged just more than eight minutes per game in the fourth quarter and earned first-team all-rookie honors. Despite a slight setback due to a mid-season groin injury, Jaquez finished the year at just under 12 points on 49% shooting, 3.8 rebounds, and 2.6 assists, while logging about 28 minutes per game. Miami Heat, NBA insider thinks Anthony Edwards' 2024 Olympics experience may cause him to recreate shocking moment. The Miami Heat are in a weird place, roster-wise. The Heat lost in the first round to the Boston Celtics in five games, but Jimmy Butler's unavailability due to injury is a major reason behind the lopsided loss. If playoff Jimmy was on the floor, we might have seen a completely different series play out. The Heat now find themselves in an awkward position where Butler is not interested in signing an extension in the immediate future. His contract dilemma exposes a worrying hole in the team's future should he decide to let the season play out and enter free agency next summer. However, fans know that the Heat always finds a way to keep the team competitive. They always find a way to find the right players who fit into their scheme and culture and build a competitive roster that can compete in the East. And if a recent rumor is to be believed, they might have the perfect replacement for Butler waiting around the corner. Analyst thinks Anthony Edwards' relationships with Bam Adebayo and Eric Spolster will convince him to join the Miami Heat Bill Simmons isn't averse from stirring the pot with his hot takes, but one of his most recent ones mentioned on his The Ringers podcast will anger plenty of Minnesota Timberwolves fans and excite Heat fans. Per fan cited Elijah Hamilton, when does the first you know, and Edwards really loves Bam and Spolstra and his experience with them. Don't be surprised, story drop. Am I dropping it now? Simmons said. It's definitely a wild take, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Many still remember how LeBron James broke the hearts of millions of Cleveland Cavaliers fans when he decided to move to South Beach in 2010, and the idea to move to Miami came about after James spent time with Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and Carmelo Anthony in the Olympics. If the bonds Edwards built with Adebayo and Spolstra in Paris are that strong, it wouldn't be weird to see the Miami Heat come knocking at his door once his current deal with the Timberwolves end at the end of the 2028-29 season. However, it could also happen a lot sooner than we imagine. For years are a long time, after all. The Miami Heat are still considered a younger NBA franchise. Founded in 1988, the Heat have had a lot of early success, three NBA championships and seven finals appearances. Also, Miami has had seven Hall of Famers that have played for them. Even during their short lifespan, the Heat have had a lot of talent walk through their doors. Unfortunately, they have had to let some talent leave through trades or free agency maybe earlier than their talent was realized. 
Glenn Rice was drafted fourth overall by the Miami Heat and played seven seasons for them. Throughout his career, Rice showed the ability to score the ball at a high level. Rice delivers some of the scoring load despite being a rookie. Starting in 60 games, Rice averaged 13.6 points per game in his rookie season. Rice led Miami to its first postseason in 1992. Miami lost to Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. The following season, Rice led Miami back to the playoffs against the Atlanta Hawks, which Miami got its first franchise playoff win but lost in five. The following season was Rice's best season in Miami, Rice averaged 22.3 points a game, made 185 three Rice, participated in the All-Star Weekend, and won the three-point contest. Despite having a career year, Miami missed the playoffs. In 1995, the Miami Heat hired Pat Riley as their GM slash head coach. Riley traded Rice to the Charlotte Hornets for Alan Oso Mooring. That trade made Miami develop a culture, and what we know Miami for now started back in 1995. Rice ended up having a promising career. Being a three-time start, I won a championship with the Los Angeles Lakers in 2000. Miami acquired Mourning, who became a franchise legend for Miami. But, if Miami had kept Rice, would Miami have had heat culture? Miami had to give up Rice to improve the team, but it is fun to think what would have happened if Rice had stayed longer in Miami. Would Rice be a better player? Does Miami try to make a trade for someone who doesn't involve Rice? Does Miami trade for Tim Hardway? Rumor, Miami Heat identifies new trade target after failing to sign Lori Markkinen. After failing to sign Lori Markkinen from the Utah Jazz, it may seem like the Miami Heat are running out of trade options that would help them break through and reach another finals. Their understanding of the current state of their roster is the biggest reason behind their aggressive pursuits of Markkinen and Paul George before they ended up with their respective teams. Their decisions show that the Miami Heat may not be the top free agent destination they once were in the mid to late 2010s. However, that fact isn't stopping the Dubs from finding a roster mate who can help the Miami Heat to lead the team to another deep run in the postseason. They've already identified their latest trade target, and this rumor could end up being the move the Warriors actually make this offseason. Fansided's Christopher Klein published an article officially linking the Dubs to the two-time All-Star. He noted that Markkanen's decision to remain in Utah forced the team to look for more reasonable trades, which is the category Levine fits into. While there are issues that make the 29-year-old a less desirable target than Markkanen, circumstances force the Miami Heat to act. This contract is difficult, but it will gradually become less catastrophic as the NBA's new TV deal takes effect. The salary cap around the league is about to skyrocket. Plus, the Bulls are practically trying to give Levine away for free. This relationship has soured beyond the point of no return. We've seen veiled criticism from the Bulls' front office, as well as reports that Levine wants out, badly. Miami Heat can fix this situation in one fell swoop and perhaps gain some extra benefits in the process. Levine had a bad season if you consider his status as a fringe all-star caliber player. He only played in 25 games last season, averaging 19.5 points, 5.2 rebounds, and 3.9 assists per game. Plus, there's also the problem with Levine's supposed attitude during his time as Chicago's top bull. However, these red flags don't take away from the fact that Levine is still a great player that the Miami Heat can repurpose to fit into their scheme. It will be interesting to see how much he costs the Miami Heat roster before the Bulls send him away. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Zach Levine? Leave your opinion in the comments.